Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step off. Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome back to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this is Tom Clark's main event. What's up, kids? Welcome back to the program. Yes, I have a co-host today. There he is. He hung out with me all night in the office. He's hanging out with me again. Say hello to the DOG. DOG, take a bow. Nope. Okay. So as you guys and gals know, I can't say his name. If I say his name, he's going to be over here wet, wagging his tail going, you going to pet me? Go some food? Do you have some food? Because my dog uh, loves to eat. I just said the, the word. Oh, watch him come over here. Maybe not. He seems a little tired. Happy Friday to you folks. What's going on out there in Facebook land? Facebookville? Facebook Berg? I don't know. Um, I look great today, don't I? So I've got, uh, and yes, it is, before you say anything, it is possible to have allergies in the month of February. I constantly have issues with my eyes. It's crazy. There goes the ding. I owe everybody a dollar. Uh, sorry about that. Text messages. Text messages. Uh, um, uh, 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 text messages are, are going crazy on me. So it is what it is. Um My apologies. So I owe everybody here a dollar. Checks in the mail. Uh, we've got a big show to get to today. Hope everybody out there is doing great. Hope you've had a great week. Hope everybody's been safe, happy, health and, healthy, and smart. Um, let's get some hellos out the way. Who was the first one to the dance today? Russell Jackson, what's up, my friend? Sugar Shane Odom, thank you for hanging out, brother. Christopher, what's going on? Shannon, how are you today? Guten Tag, Sandy in Germany. How's it going, man? Mark, what's up? Hey, hey, Vic, what's going on, my friend? Double V. Jeff, what's going on? Carlos Martinez. Uh, Shane, good to see you, man, again, as always. Belinda, what's up? Mark, what's going on? Miss Lopez, welcome back to the show. Kelly in Bedford, Indiana, or from Bedford, Indiana. There you go. Elvis Martinez says, it's freezing here in Pueblo, about 20 degrees. Brother, you can have that. You can have all of it. I want nothing to do with any of it. Because I hate it. Uh, let's see. Mark says, before the show, I watched AJ Styles versus Kota Ibushi for the IWGP title in 2017. Yes, it's a great classic match. Go out of your way to watch yourself some New Japan because, oh, my God, it's good stuff. What's up, Jim? Uh, Jeffrey says, Dan House is MVP of wrestling. Until you've seen Dan House in live, you don't know what you're missing. The guy is very entertaining live. I'll give him that. What's up, Ray? Number one, Adam Cole fan in the house. Timothy says, uh, trying to stay warm. Big cold weather hitting San Antonio. Brother, be safe out there. Hope you're doing well. Christopher says, minus 25 with the wind chill. Brother, you can have that here or have that there all day long because I want nothing to do with it. Because I hate the cold weather, yo. I'm not even kidding. No joke. Overlay time. There we go. Bam. Okay, so... We have lots to get to today, and I got a hard out a few minutes before 12. My kid has a dentist appointment today at 1.30. Real life beckons kids. So as a result of that, as a result of that, um, I got to be out of here a little bit before, did I say 12? 1 o'clock. My bad. I got to be out here a little bit before 11. God bless it. Rewind. Part three. Third time's charm. Got to be out here a little bit before 1. See that? It's the number one. Rebound. Rebound. It's going to be okay. This too shall pass. I'm a firm believer in that. I live my life by it. This too shall pass. All you people talking about how cold it is in your neck of the woods, keep it. I don't want anything to do with any of your cold weather nonsense. It's cold enough here for me as it is. I want nothing more to do with it. Okay? Ray, this is for you. Bam. There you go, brother. Listen, just so everybody knows out there, I'm not some kind of monkey that's just going to dance and press a button whenever you want him to. It's not how the, it's not how the show goes. 
All right, get it straight. But in that vein, let's kick off the show with this. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? I got one clue for you. Camera guys. He's back and I'm going to the moon. And if you don't like it, guess what? You can kiss my grin. I had to do that last one. That one is so much fun. I finished it up earlier. Oh my God. He brought back the kiss my grits thing. If any of you out there know what Alice is, Alice was a sitcom in the 80s, late 70s, 80s, I think. Yeah. I grew up watching Alice and there was a character on there named Flo, Flo the waitress. And that was what she said constantly. So uh, everybody out there watching, uh, that's Cameron Grimes doing his thing. And again, if you don't like that. You can kiss my I freaking love it. Oh, my God. It's my favorite thing in the world now. I'm not even kidding. He came out and he cut this ridiculous promo about how he discovered a thing called video games. Like, he was completely unaware this whole time. And they're pretty cool, man. I had to go get some more. And I walked this place called GameStop. God, he's so country. It's insane. I love every second of it. I'm here for it. I'm completely dialed in. By the way, my DOG is now covered up. How you like them apples? The overlay done covered him up. You can see a little bit of him there. He's still there, I promise you. So uh, my intention was not to cover up the DOG. However, that's what I did. Um, yes, man. So uh, we'll have to adjust that overlay at some point and get that uh, get the uh, subscribe uh, uh, logo down a little bit farther, probably to match where the banners meet. That way you can see the DOG in all his glory. I'll work on that. So there you go. Uh, Brenda, what's going on? Shane says him and Cyrus of Iris both need to stay out of wrestling. I don't know who you're talking about, brother. You're talking about Cameron? Sean, bite your tongue. Bite your tongue. Clean out of your head. Are you kidding me? Wow. Uh, Shannon says, yes, new kid. Yes, ma'am. All day long. I loves it. All right, let's get to the show. As I said before, lots to talk about. Lots of stuff to go over here today. Edge versus who you got. Here's my deal. Um, he's not made it clear who he's going to face at Mania, and I'm okay with that. Um, the most logical match of the three seems to be Roman Reigns. Um, it makes sense. However, Kevin Owens is still hanging on, okay? Um, we And we we teased that last week. Phil uh, Phil Lindsay was on the show last week. Big shout-outs to Phil, as always, for uh, showing up on the main event and for constantly doing the 6M podcast with me. New episodes drop every Tuesday, by the way. Shameless plug time. So, yes. Um, uh, so there you go. But we teased that last week, and I, I, I posed the question, is Kevin Owens actually done with Roman? Is Roman done with Kevin Owens? And obviously the answer to both of those questions is no. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I firmly expect that thing to keep going. So do I think it's going to be Roman versus Edge? Yes, I do. However, you could make the case for Edge versus Drew if you want. It makes sense. However, you can really make the case for Edge versus Finn, which I did last week in a column on Geek Vibes Nation. By the way, check out my stuff on the Geek Vibes Nation. It's much appreciated. Um, yes, yes. So you can you can make the case for that as well. Um, there's even been speculation out there. I think Phil said it on Twitter uh, uh, yesterday, I believe. You know, why not have him uh, for the Intercontinental title? Why not have him for uh, uh, the U.S. title? Why not do a secondary belt? I don't know what the plan is going to be. But if we're talking about the main event of WrestleMania, then you have to think it's one of the big three titles. So what do you guys think? Who do you think? Um, um, Ray says Edge versus Finn uh, makes a better match. I agree with that. I agree with that. Totally. Um, Roman and Owens are money, Jeffrey says. Edge versus Styles if Styles wins next Sunday. Well, there you go. Um, we'll see what happens here, man. I think anything can happen anytime. Uh, Timothy still so talking about the weather. Timothy, I love you, but God, let's get off the weather. We we got to uh Sean, more power to you, brother. Goodbye. God, people are hard to get along with sometimes, aren't they? Okay, cool. Whatever, dude. Uh, let's see. What else you guys got for me on this? Uh Sandy says Edge versus Reigns versus Owens. I think it could work. I think it could work. Yeah, why not? 
Liam says, should Dream stay NXT? Talking about Velveteen Dream. Velveteen Dream perhaps shouldn't be there anymore at all. Maybe not even with the company. Dude, Velveteen Dream's been... The accusation has thrown that guy's way. And look at I'm no judge. I'm no lawyer here or anything like that. So I don't know what the deal is. But it's there seems to be a lot of uh, smoke to the fire, if you know what I'm saying. Maybe there's some fire to the smoke. I'll put it to you that way. Uh, when will the Miz cash in and who will he cash in on? Jeffrey, brother, if I knew, I would tell you. I would like to tell you I care about what Miz does. But if I said that, I would be lying. No disrespect intended. Um so, yeah, what do you guys think about Edge, man? Because I don't know how I feel about it right now. I do think Edge versus Balor is the better match. If I'm being honest, I think that's how it's going to go. Um, it makes sense. It's different. It's out the box. Um, and plus, you know, we've always talked about on this show and and in fan circles for years how we want you know NXT to be represented on the big events, on the big major cards. And I think the best way to do that is the WrestleMania card, obviously. So, um, you know, what better way to do that uh, than to have the NXT Championship defended at WrestleMania? So there you go. I think that's the way to go. And why not defend it against Edge, who would help put that title on the map as it should be? Um, Jeffrey says Edge versus Drew is my prediction. Well, there you go. We'll see. We shall see. Balor versus Valter at Mania. I'd pay to see that, Sandy. If I didn't have the network, I'd pay to see that. That'd be well worth the viewing for sure. Let's hit on a couple more headlines before we dive deep into the shows this past week. Sammy Guevara has quit the inner circle. Again, if you follow my work on Geek Vibes Nation, I did publish a piece uh, that it hit this morning. Is Sammy Guevara moving up in AEW now that he is no longer with the inner circle? Now, let's keep a few things in mind here, kids. This angle between him and Jericho in the inner circle is likely not over. Um, it's probably just beginning. We don't know all this means uh, for Sammy moving forward. However, we're pretty sure um, that it it the 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 thrust of this is that in the end of the day, Sammy's going to become a solo act. Sammy was more real this past Wednesday night than he's ever been seen on that program. He came across as I'm not playing this anymore. I'm tired of the games. He seemed like a real guy. The act that he puts on as the smarmy cocky heel is great, and he does ex excellent with it. However, when he dropped his guard this past Wednesday, I saw a real man behind that gimmick, and it was refreshing. And I want to see more of that. He's such a pretty guy, and I don't mean this. I'm not dissing for that, but it's just he's such a white meat baby face just by looking at him. Um, and I'm gonna be straight with you, man. I see him as as being one of the top three guys carrying this company within the next five to ten years. It's him, MJF, and Darby Allen. So that's my belief. A lot of people have said that and predicted it over the past two years, but I I, I do hold true to that. And honestly, um, uh, he's worked hard to get it. I wasn't sold on him from the, from the very beginning, but man, he's come a long way in two just two years, I believe. So we'll see what happens next, but no, I don't believe that it's over. Bobby says that was a good show. I agree. Good Dynamite. It was fun. We'll get into some more of the Dynamite uh, um, uh, here uh, later. So, um Timothy says, was this the right time to leave the inner circle? I think he had to. I think from a character's perspective, he didn't have a choice. This thing has been leading, uh, going to a head for a while. And when he came out, <clears throat> excuse me, and got in Jericho's face and basically said, look, I told you if one more thing happened, I was done. Well, the thing happened and I'm done. I mean, that was pretty matter of fact. And let's be honest, man. He's a man of his word. So uh, what's up, Dave? Welcome to the show. <clears throat> excuse me for a sec, folks. I finished my coffee. Um, Marion says she's sorry. I like some back. Hey, there you go. Nothing wrong with that. Sandy talking about Edge should bring back the big gold belt. Whoever started that rumor online, whether it was one of the writers or whatnot, let that stuff go. The world title doesn't even exist anymore. That thing was unified with the WWE Championship years ago. Let's just let the let us stay dead. I don't want to see the big gold belt back. That thing, it's a, it's a lot of people's favorite title, Sandy, if I'm being honest, but it's not mine. Um, the classic NWA Globe belt is maybe my favorite of all time, right next to the Red Leather uh, NWA World Television Championship. So that's my favorite titles. That's just my own input. Um, let the big gold, gold belt stay where it's at. I don't think we need to see it back on TV. I'm okay with the Universal Championship. It was odd in the beginning, but, you know, um, let's, just, uh, let's just roll with it. Uh, Elvis Martinez says, uh, how about Lana winning on Monday? What? I'm sorry, Elvis. You're going to have to speak up. What was that again? What? I'm sorry, Elvis. One more time. What? Elvis, let me try this here. What? Um, it's not working. How about this one? What? 
Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. I could just do a full hour of Austin saying what? <clears throat> Life is good. Elvis, I'm playing with you. Uh, so, yeah, man, there we go with that. We could talk a little bit more about Sammy as the as the show progresses. Let's dive into the blue brand. Let's stay on track, shall we? Three SmackDown takeaways of the week. We're getting back to that little feature of the show. Hope you enjoy it, because here we go. KO is not finished with Roman Reigns. We said this earlier as we kicked off today, and I firmly believe that this thing is not over yet, not by a long shot. I'm not done with you yet. No, not by a long shot. It's Austin. It's horrible. I'll work on it. Um, <laughs> we'll see. How interested are you in continuing to see Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship? Do you care about it? Are you over it? Um, do you want to see KO end up with the title? I don't know if any of us believes that's actually going to happen. I, 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 I don't know, man. I really don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Shannon, going back to Sammy, the way he entered through the heel tunnel and then left through the face on. Well done, Shannon. Shannon gets the no prize for this week. Check the mailbox. It's on the way. Nice. Timothy says to me, when Sammy punched MJF in the rib, looks so real. Well, he probably told him to make it look good. Sugar Shane says, watch what happens. Sammy quit as a hoax. He'll be playing MJF. Jericho and Sammy are working undercover to get rid of MJF. You could be right. I'd be okay with that, too. I'd be okay with that, too. For sure. Um, what do you guys think? Oh, so Rebecca is commenting, right, on the uh, Kevin Owens Roman Reigns thing. There you go. Alicia says the whole Lana versus Nia needs to go away. I agree with that, Alicia. Two words, one catchphrase. Hot garbage. Bam. There you go. Uh, yes, Jim, uh, we we talked a little bit about Butch Reed last week. Uh, uh Condolences to uh, his family, friends, and fans for sure. James says, is Gunberg done wrestling? I would say don't bet your life on it, my friend. Don't bet your life on it. Um, so, yeah, to wrap up the Roman Reigns thing, and as I said, we're trying to stay on target today, kids. Um, uh, I, lo I, I love Roman. I don't think there's a person on the planet who doesn't love what Roman's doing right now. If they are, they're deaf, dumb, and blind because how can you not love what he's doing? He's so good. Why are you disrespecting me? Why is he disrespecting me, Paul? Such good stuff. Um, I, I love this guy to death, and and my respect for him has grown over the years. Uh, he had a tough road to hoe. Yes, I was one of the writers pointing out, constantly pointing out that he was getting destroyed by the fans, but I also constantly pointed out through no fault of his own because that's 100% true. Now he's getting props, and he very well should because he deserves to get props. So good for him and good on him for the job that he's doing. Uh, do I want to see him continue with Kevin Owens? Eh. Eh. We'll see. Marion says, I heard Seth Rollins come back to SmackDown. Here's my thing. Marion brings up a good point, and a lot of people are talking about this too. Here's my deal. Okay, here we go, folks. If you're going to put Seth Rollins on the SmackDown, you have to turn him face. That's it, and that's all. Good night, folks. See you next week. Because you can't have the powerhouse heel that is Roman Reigns as your heavyweight champion and not expect him to con to eventually butt heads with another powerhouse heel who's his ex-shield partner, who's his ex-rival, who's his ex-best friend, and Seth freaking Rollins. You have to make this happen. Because if you don't, they're not going to work each other. They might play nice as heels, but there's not going to be a Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns match. Now, I could eat my words. This could all be hocus pocus and it could be nothing but nonsense and I could be totally off base here. But in my opinion, if you put him back on the blue brand, you turn him face. That's that's my that's my that's my take. Shane says Tom Woody impressions on son. Brock Anderson looks fantastic, doesn't he? I'm so looking forward to seeing that kid in the ring. Jamel says, the last three months, how many different AEW title matches have we seen at the same time as we've seen Roman versus Owens? Good point, Jamel. Very good point. You could take that either way. You can ride the fence either way on that, actually. Uh, Elvis, if I had to guess, I would say Murphy is nursing some sort of injury, but I, I can't see. I, I can't say that for sure. Liam, it looks like Joe is just on commentary now. Joe is healing up and saving his body. Good for him. If he can continue to get paid and do what he likes to do, and not destroy his body anymore, then go go with God, I say. 
Here's my second SmackDown takeaway of the week. Cesaro on the rise, because we never know with this guy, right? We never know what the company plans to do with Cesaro. So um, here's the deal with this guy. We all want Cesaro to do well. Yes, we all want Cesaro to be a success. We all would love to see Cesaro with a major championship. He beat Daniel Bryan on SmackDown, and even the commentators put over, wow, he just pinned Daniel Bryan. I want this to mean something. I, I'm sure Phil does too when he saw it happen. I want this to lead somewhere. If it's not going to lead anywhere, at least establish this guy as a main event threat, if not a main event player. Do something for him, in my opinion. Do titles mean anything to Cesaro? To Cesaro? If, he's a, if he's a pro wrestler worth his salt, uh, then yes, the world championship means something to him. If you don't want the world title, you have no business being in the business. That's my humble opinion. I've met many guys over the years who that's the only reason they got in is because they want to be called world champion. Even though, even though it may not mean anything to some people, fans call it a prop or whatever. Tell that to the guys, the men and women who kill themselves X number of days throughout the year to put on a good show. Ask them if it means something to them. Yes, Sandy, it does seem like Cesaro signed a W contract. Uh, it's a shame. Uh, cause I wanted to see him in AEW, but it is what it is. So maybe that means now that he signed a contract, they're going to throw him a bone and throw him a world championship at some point. We shall see Cesaro versus Roman Reigns for WWE universal championship is a match. I could definitely get behind. I think it would be really well done. It'd be good. You got some history there between Cesaro and Heyman. I'd be totally fine with that. Third SmackDown takeaway of the week, Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks. Is that where we're going with this? Bianca has yet to make clear who she's going to face at WrestleMania 37 for the uh, for the championship for the um, um, uh, for her title shot. So we'll see. Um, it seems to make sense that Sasha is the one, um, but we shall see. What do you guys think? Is is Banks versus Belair the best match to bank on? No pun intended. Um, Oscar versus Belair is a nice mix of styles. We know she's not going to go back to NXT and challenge. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so I, you know, we'll see, we'll see. I, I think Banks is the one, unless Banks were to drop it before then, and then it'll be Belair versus whoever. You know what I mean? So, it, it it's a toss up right now, folks. We will see what happens. Joe says Belair versus Banks needs to happen. Everyone, listen to Joe. And by the way, eat at Joe's. He's got a fine establishment. Um, <laughs> I like Bianca a lot. I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound like, oh, Tom's crapping on her. No, I don't mean it to sound like that. My apologies if it does. I'm kind of over the hair thing. I like her as a talent. I like her as a personality. The hair thing, when she's flinging it around and she's hitting women with it like a whip. I get it. It's her shtick. I get it. Go with God. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you're going to be a world champion and do that? But... Now, this is, you know, we're talking about Sasha Banks, who wears different colored wig uh, every day of the week. I assume it's a wig. I would I would assume maybe she's dyeing her hair. Maybe she is. It's, it's all good. I don't care either way. But, you know, the gear to match the color of the hair this week. And she comes out and she's got Snoop doing her song and she's very produced and no disrespect to her. But I'm like, I'm going to complain because, um, you know, Bianca flips her hair. Who am I to complain about that? Who am I going to complain about that? Miss Lopez, by the way, thank you for coming back. We were kind of all worried about you there for a while. Jamel says, if Vince allows his pattern, we will now not see Cesar get a major push ever. No other organization can sign him. Yeah, they made, that's the truth. That's truth too, man. They've, they've tied him down now. Now he's stuck. Wants to be stuck, right? Ray says, Banks is a great worker. She's very good. Shannon says, Sasha and Bianca make the most. Bianca, did you catch that? Bianca. Makes the most sense, but I would be okay with Asuka. Asuka needs a new challenge because her title run has been stale from your lips to the ears of God. Because, yes, from day one, it's been stale in my humble opinion. Folks, you want to move on to the red show? Red brand? There it is. Let's do that. My three raw takeaways owed a week. Elimination Chamber main event match announced this past week. Huge match. Drew McIntyre will step inside Satan's structure to defend against Randy Orton, Matt Hardy, AJ Styles, Sheamus, and The Miz. My money's on The Miz. New WWE champ. I'm just kidding. Then he loses it and then cashes it right back in to win it. Boy, wouldn't that be something if he held on to the briefcase Hmm, interesting. Didn't uh, 
Didn't Alberto Rodriguez do that? Didn't he win? Didn't he beat Punk and then actually ca- no, he cashed in to win it. Wasn't that how it went? Yeah. Yeah. So Jamel says uh Max will be eliminated first and then cash in. Perhaps so. Yes, I got Hardy in there. I got Hardy in. He's in there. Uh Reggie wants me to comment on Nia Jax. Hot garbage. There's my comment. Reg, that's all I got. Uh, let's see. What do you guys think about the Elimination Chamber match? I mean, you couldn't have made this a number one contenders match because you already got a number one contender. So that wouldn't have made any sense. So you might as well put Drew in this thing, right? So I guess I'm okay with it. But to put the champ in this much jeopardy leading up to WrestleMania seems like an odd deal and always has, if I'm being straight with you. I mean, it is what it is. I, I take it as it comes. Um, let me take just a moment here as you guys are are, are thinking about this. Um, uh, let me let me uh, tell you guys about a little something, something right now. And I'm going to attempt to bring it up as we're talking. In the meantime, uh, what do you guys think, actually? Where are we? There we is. Don't ask out the wrong thing, Tom. <laughs> Uh, what do you? What's your take on Elimination Chamber? Sandy says, "Fun fact: Chamber was the last pay per view with fans." Well done, well done. Sandy's been doing his homework. Well done, my friend. Let's see. This musical interlude brought to you by Tom Clark's main event. <laughs> um, I'm bringing some. I'm queuing something up here that I wanted to have queued up to begin with, and I just did not do so. My apologies. Um, I was going to make an announcement. I made the announcement via Facebook this morning. And if any of you missed it, now you're going to get a chance to see it. Um, and uh, I'm going to th- find that pic. Bear with me here, kids. There it is. It's There we go. Um, yes. Okay. So we jump back to here. I'm back. What's up? Liam says Bobby will take Jeff's place in the chamber. Lashley, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. We'll see. <laughs> Mark, still talking about the uh, Nia Jax thing. Rebecca says should prove to be interesting. We'll either make Drew more famous or it will be a mess. Good point. We'll see what happens. Dave says I think a Miss cashes in elimination chamber. Yeah, if he were if he were smart, he'd cash in at Mania, wouldn't he? Uh, Alicia says Lashley in place the miss sounds good to me and probably to a lot of other people as well. Why well, have Hardy in the match? Elvis says he should be a tag team and have the tag belts. Uh, so listen here, listen here, Elvis. I, I came out wrong. Jeff Hardy is a is a main event player. He always has been, or he has been for a long time, and he has he probably always will be. Um, so my thing is this, kids. Um, uh. And that's this is probably going to pop up as soon as I hit it. So announcement will be coming now. There we go. I'll get right back to you. So on March 5th, that is three weeks from today, Tom Clark's main event will have as a special guest star, the maestro himself, Rob Kellum. Rob Kellum competed in WCW as the maestro. maestro excuse me. I want to get this announcement going before I actually forgot to mention it. We're going to be hyping this thing up over the course of the next three weeks. We want you guys to be sure if you're watching the main event today, as always, continue to tune back into the main event. You're going to dig this. Uh, He's a really nice guy. I'm looking forward to having him on. So, yes, any of you WCW fans out there um, who remember uh, Rob from his WCW days and he's still connected to the business, please be sure to watch the main event that day, okay, because uh, it will be a fun interview, I'm sure. Nice guys, I said before, have a lot of uh, great pro wrestling stories to tell and to share with us. So that should be awesome. I wanted to get that plug before I uh, moved on with the rest of the show here. So there you go, kids. March 5th, Papa Stroh himself, the maestro, Rob Kellum, will join us here on Tom Carr's main event. Don't miss it. Bam. There you go. So um, (laughs) let's get back to the show here, folks. Um, uh, What else are we thinking here? Let's see. Uh, uh, Sandy said Jeff needs us. I'm not crazy about that no more words. I guess if you want to s- distinguish him from Matt, I guess you can. Matt's not there anymore to use it or not use it. So who really, I don't know if it's really a big deal if I'm being straight with you. 
it is what it is, man. I'm okay with it. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, they could do anything they want. I know Jeff is a fan of that theme, so we'll see what happens. Elvis says, I like Jeff, made it back in 2017 and got one of his arm sleeves he wore during the match. He's a good, he's a Carolina boy. Us Carolina boys are usually humble, nice guys. Our mama's done raised us right. Got manners, yo. I'm just saying. Dave says he would like to see Matt Riddle win the U.S. title. I'm sorry to correct you, Dave, but it's Riddle. Yikes. I'm kidding, Dave, I'm playing. Actually, they do call him Riddle. It's ridiculous. Big Star has been making Tom Clark's show uh, so far. Timothy, we do all we can. We do all we can here to entertain. Let's go on with the uh, go on. There it is. Second Raw takeaway of the week. I'm going to say this again. I said it last week. However, I believe it bears repeating. Ric Flair <laughs> is not <laughs> a heel. <laughs> Period. That's it. This is one of the most bizarre things. You can't really say that. They've done a lot of bizarre things in their time, yes? This is one of the weirdest angles I've ever seen. I can't make heads or tails of it. Ric Flair is not a heel. Charlotte is the heel. That's bottom line. They can sneak attack her all they want. Lacey can sneak attack her all she wants. Rick is not the heel in this equation. Period. If this were being done in front of a live crowd, they would be booing Charlotte out of the room because everybody loves Rick. Okay. Rick is not a heel in this angle. I don't know where it's going. I'm glad it's not going the way of romance. Thank goodness for that because we don't need it, nor do we want it. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I just, I don't get it. Sandy says, Charlotte is boring, period. There you go. Shanna believes that the entire storyline with Charlotte is... Hot garbage! Um, a lot of people would agree with that sentiment, if I'm being straight with you. There you go. Um, yeah, I, I just... Um, hmm. uh, Reggie, yeah, you're right, man. He was styling Monday night. Woo! That might be my favorite one. I love Nash to death. Uh, Shane says, I got a match for you. Impact Wrestling's Joe Doring versus uh, AW's Lance Archer. I'd buy that for sure. Liam, I didn't see anything between Bailey and Kaylee Ray. No, I didn't see that. Interesting. Uh, Rebecca says, This is as bad as Flair being in the ring, stripping down to his underwear. Just a weird storyline. Nothing is as entertaining, not bad, as entertaining as Flair being in the ring, getting stripped down to his underwear. It's classic Ric Flair spot from the Mid-Atlantic Jim Crockett days, and I love it. I don't want to see it now, but at one time, it was amazingly awesome. So there you go. Sandy says, Tom is ahead of the podcast table. Not by a long shot, my friend, but thank you for the sentiment. Um, I do my little shows and I do what I can to contribute and I enjoy every second of it. Let's get to the third raw takeaway of the week so we can keep keep on trucking, baby. Damian Priest is on the rise. This is not a question. This is an answer. Damian Priest is on the rise. He's a bright, shiny new toy in the box that Vince McMahon says, look at this guy, pal. Oh, let's play with it. I'm happy for Damian. I truly am. And I want to see this work out. I want to see it continue to do well. I want to see him continue to do well. And he's getting more spotlight and opportunities where maybe Keith Lee didn't at some point, and they kind of changed their mind, and they brought him back, and then they're not sure, but then they are sure. I want to see good things happen for Damien. Do not be surprised if Vince gets tired and puts the toy back in the box and goes to find another toy to play with. No disrespect to anybody involved. I do like Damien a lot. Um, it's just me being cynical and cold-hearted. <laughs> I shouldn't be. But sometimes I am, if I'm being straight. Um, I just don't trust. I, I I respect Damian, and I want to see him do well. And I'm glad he's doing well thus far. I don't respect the process by which they get guys to where they, where they want them to be. I'm saying. Jim says, Priest, please dump that bad bunny idiot. Jim's had enough. Jim's had enough. Jim's out there talking smack about the bad bunny. You know what happens if that happens? That's hard time. 
That didn't fit. I'll push it on that one. It's okay. It's okay. I, I had to get Dusty in there somehow. Um, yeah, but I mean, Damien is on the rise, kids. Uh, he's moving up. Sandy says, uh, good, WWE didn't change it. Yeah, I agree. Thank goodness. That his theme is fine. His theme is fine. Carla says he's supposed to have a tag match at WrestleMania with Bad Bunny, I heard. I wouldn't be surprised at all. That's a long time to milk this, but they could do it. They could more than do it. They could more than do it. So, Shane said, not a fan of Priest, especially when he does the bow and arrows motion. Really? I mean, you gotta you gotta move past the little the little show button stuff, man. He's good in the ring. Evan says he should have went to SmackDown, maybe, but then he gets lost in the shuffle on SmackDown. A lot of great talents on SmackDown. Not there's not on Raw, but I think Raw needs a guy like him. His height, his size, his talent, his uh, character, his gimmick. I think he's fine as long as they take care of him. Cherie says, here's a thought. Lashley, Lashley drops the belt to Riddle, and then Priest wins the belt from Riddle. Riddle's face. I guess that could work. I guess that could work. Um, beating Lashley would be a little bit more significant, in my opinion. And Alicia says, Damian Priest is a beast. Priest is a beast. Oh, my God, Alicia. Alicia, shut up. I'm going to leave that up. Alicia, pat yourself on the back. That's tremendous. Damian Priest is a beast. Crap. And if he ever faces Brock, it's the Priest versus the Beast, pal. Let's squash him in 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Well done, Alicia. I like that. Priest is a beast. Um, let's see. Have Keith Lee win the belt from Lashley. I'd be okay with that. Robbie says Priest versus Messiah would be great. For sure. Damien versus Seth Rollins would be great. Uh, Jeff says, as long as they don't ruin him like Corbin, make him cut his hair and change gimmick. Um, yeah. I think you've got a good point, Jeff. I think, uh, I think you're right. I think they did sort of ruin Baron in the long run. Timothy says, I heard rapper Bow Wow wants to learn to team up with Ray. Bow Wow went on Twitter and said he wants to have a run in WWE. He wants to do wrestling. We'll see what happens. Damien should have brought the girls from NXT so he can live forever. Reggie says, oh, he's going to live forever. Think the girls aren't in the car waiting on him? That kind of sounded sexist. My apologies. Let's talk about ratings this week, kids. Uh, this week's SmackDown with 2.257 compared to last week's 2.28. Raw down significantly, 1.71 down from last week's 1.98. There are your ratings for this past week versus the week before. Let's move on, kids. NXT Vengeance Day preview taking place this Sunday, the day before Valentine's Day. Have you bought your flowers yet? I can't hear you. Your flowers, your cards, your candy, your cookies, your stuff, your stuffed animals. You got to go buy them. I don't know why I got high pitched on that one. I went out this morning, took care of business. There's flowers downstairs, there's a card, and there's a cookie. Don't worry, she doesn't watch the show. She won't know. Don't anybody tell her either. You got to do your part, man. Let's talk about the five matches that are listed right now. You have MSK versus the Grizzly Young Veterans, Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic Finals. Who you got? I believe MSK goes over in this match. Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart versus Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. Women's Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic Finals. Whoever wins this match, in my opinion, should get a shot at the Women's Tag Team Championships. No doubt about it. NXT North American Championships, Johnny Gargano defends against Kushida. You know, the way will be around in full force, I'm sure. NXT Women's Champion, Io Shirai versus Tony Storm versus Mercedes Martinez. Triple threat match. I'm here for that. There you go. I'm also here for the main event. Finn Balor versus Pete Dunne. There you go, kids. There is your NXT Vengeance Day preview. What do you guys... Darn it. What do you guys think? Uh, Elvis has corrected me. Thank you, sir. Sunday is the Valentine's Day. No, I'm not not ready. I am ready. No, I'm not right yet. That's it. I put the brain in the robot, you know. That's a SpongeBob reference, by the way. Thank you, Elvis. You're totally right. Uh, let's see. James says, with something completely off topic, have Parker against Damien. Parker Bordeaux. Bordeaux? Bordeaux. The kid's beast himself. We'll see what happens, man. Don't book him yet. Has no business being on the main roster and going after guys right now. 
Alicia says Karen Cross being wasted. Don't worry, Alicia. They're going to get him off that show in all due order. I don't think it'll take long. Shannon says it's a stat card for sure. I totally agree with that sentiment. Dave says he believes that Finn Balor retains. I don't have just but one Finn Balor impression. And that's it. It's just him saying his name. For all I know, it doesn't even sound like him. I don't know. Um, Cherie says, I'm looking forward to the women's matches. Boy, you said that. I'm definitely looking forward to that for sure. That'll be the highlight of the night for me. Ray says fans should keep it and then defend against the real champ. Yes. Ray wants to see Finn retain and defend against. But haven't we seen that enough, Ray? I mean, not for Ray, but I'm saying for the rest of you. Yeah. Well, as I said before, kids, we're going to keep on trucking. Let's talk about some AE dub. What did you think about John Moxley and Lance Archer versus Kenny Omega and Kenta on this past week's AEW Dynamite? Wow. That was a fun all over the place match. I thoroughly enjoyed it. If I'm being straight with you, um, I love it. Seeing Kenta, first of all, seeing a New Japan contracted performer in AEW ring, and then seeing your top AEW guy, former AEW World Heavyweight Champion, carrying a New Japan Championship over his shoulder, walking into the ring, it's mind-blowing. This stuff would never be seen that it'd be in 2021. Never. Never. <laughs> Am I wrong? Nope. Not wrong. I'm just saying. Bobby Tidwell says, bad A match. Can't put your comment up. You curse, Bob. Bob. Hang your head, Bob. Shameful. Jamel's got the A-dub chant going. Everybody, let's hear it. That one? Okay. Yeah, um, I enjoyed the show. I thought it was really well done. Uh, good match, too. Ray says, awesome. If Kenta can work his butt off. Uh, Kenta can work. Yeah, he can for sure. Um, Tim says, give me some more of that. Dude, here's the thing about Kenta. You know what they called Wednesday for Kenta? Just another day in Japan. Not that AEW doesn't deliver these kind of matches. They do a lot, okay? But this is this is a walk in the park for this guy. He's been doing it for years. That's how good he is. Bobby, no worries, man. I'm messing with you. No cursing, but yeah. Uh, yeah I'm not going to put curse words up on the screen, kids. I'm trying to keep this sucker clean, but no worries. You're good. Uh, crossover storylines, what's... Did you mean saving wrestling in the U.S.? I don't know about saving, but it sure is making it fun to watch, isn't it? Reggie says, I love what AEW and Impact and in Japan are. I, dude, I, they're leading to something huge. And man, when they lead to the big event, we're going to have a massive blowout show here in the main event. We'll have Phil, we'll have Troy, we'll have dun, tons, tons of people talking about it. It'll be fun. It'll be a great show. I'm so looking forward to it. Shane says, I'm waiting for Nick Aldis to walk out into AEW with 10 pounds gold. I, dude, I am so ready for that, Shane. God, make this happen. I'm so here for this. Mark, a lot of people forgot, man, for sure, about Mox being an uh, IWGP United States champion, for sure. Sam says NXT for life. Um, There's another AEW thing from this week. Bullet Club versus Omega Club. Dude, they're leading to Bullet Club versus Omega Club. They're leading to the G.O.D. and uh, and uh, Jay White versus Kenny Omega and Megan, the Good Brothers. I'm, I firmly believe it. They're talking openly on AEW programming now. They're talking smack about Bullet Club on AEW programming live. Uh, you've got you've got uh, Tom and Tonga online on social media calling this the uh, the bootleg club. I agree with him. I'm not picking sides, but I'm gonna tell you what: in a fight, I never side against the Bullet Club. I never side against Jay White. Not a smart thing to do. Jay White is the freaking man, baby. If you don't know Jay White stuff, look it up because you're missing out. So yeah, um, we will see what happens. But man, I'm so looking forward to that showdown. And you know when the when the things start getting better out there, and kids, you gotta you gotta hope for the best here that this thing is gonna we're gonna come out from underneath this thing at some point and start getting back to at least some semblance of normalcy in the world, not just in this country, but in the world. Um, you know, you gotta think that yeah, we're gonna start opening the borders back up, airlines, all this other stuff, and people start going to live shows in other countries. So once that happens, bam, you know, New Japan, here we come. Here we come. Um, let us uh, let's see. Uh, Reggie says, what about Great Muda winning a championship at 58? Dude, I love Great Muda. Muda is the man. I grew up watching Muda in, uh, in a Jim Crocker promotion. It's good stuff. Great stuff. Um, let's talk about ratings, kids. This week, AE Dub down substantially from last week, 741 down from 844. 
Um, however, uh, uh, NXT down as well, and well under a dub again, five hundred fifty-eight thousand compared to last week's six ten. So there you go. There's your ratings for this week: AEW Dynamite versus the NXT show. So let's wrap this show up today, kids, with an open floor. I told you I was going to keep it on target, and that's what I'm doing. We're probably going to take the same thing home about five minutes. As I said, I got to get the boy to a dentist appointment today. So it's a must do thing. Hit me with some open floor questions before we take this sucker home. Let's see. Ray says, Sammy, uh, you could be a rock star on AEW. He will be. He already is, but he's going to get much better and do much better. Will CM Punk show up before WrestleMania? James, my friend, please don't hold your breath. I'm afraid you'll pass out. Uh, Dave says, Tom, are we talking triple threat with Roman Edge and KO? I would. I think I'm okay with that. That way Roman loses, but he doesn't get pinned maybe, right? Maybe he doesn't get pinned. And then he's got, he can save face and save character and save the family and head of the table and all that stuff. I'd be okay with that. So Andy says, congrats to me and Keith Lee on their engagement. Absolutely. You're both out of your minds. Don't do it. I'm kidding. Congrats to them. Ray says, Chubb Rock or Biz Marquee. Oh God, every week, Ray, you're killing me with pop, with the uh, hip hop stuff. Because you always stump me. I love Chubb Rock, but he wasn't around that long, if I'm being straight, uh, like career-wise. Uh, I'll say Biz Markey. I don't know how you dislike either guy, to be honest with you. Tom Clark, we know AW we will be NXT. Well, you know, it, it, it flip-flops sometimes, man. It flip-flops sometimes. Joe says, will Christian be involved in IC title feud? I wouldn't be surprised. I think Christian's got another run left in him. What was that thing he was doing there? They had one more shot, right? Yeah, I could totally see that. Totally see that. What a great win for Lee Johnson. Boy, they really played that up, didn't they? Did it start to feel weird after a minute or two of it? Was it just me? I agree. Shannon says, Tom, see a lot of people complain about the amount of tag team matches on Tom every week. Your thoughts? Shannon! Good question. Tony Khan wants to get every talent in that locker room on TV. If not on Dynamite, on YouTube. Why? So they can get a payoff. I can't hate that. Um, but the way you do that is do, by doing a lot of tag team matches. And if and you guys know how New Japan's philosophy works. Let's get everybody on the card. Let's have a ton of six-man tag team matches. They can be fun. They can pass the time. The guys can rest uh, in between tagging in and out. They can just enjoy it. I have no problem with it at all. I have zero problem with it. People need to quit complaining about pro wrestling. My God. Well, it's okay to, you know, it's okay to, well, listen, this guy, I want him to succeed, but they're not doing enough with him. I get that kind of talk. But when you when you complain about the show's too long, Raw's too long, I get it. But same time, God, shut up. Like, you don't have to watch it. You don't have to watch it. I agree, Raw's too long, but I'm not going to sit here and spout and foam at the mouth about it. My God, people need to relax about it. Enjoy the wrestling, man. If Raw's not your bag, find something that is. I did, Elvis. Uh, I was not surprised that uh, Tampa won. I was surprised that Kansas City lost to the extent that they did. Alicia, hello again. Talking about Tessa, where she, she's not wrestling anywhere right now. Dave asked about Bianca. We covered that already in the show, Dave. I would guess and say Sasha Banks. Sandy's saying hi to the DOG. I could take the overlay down. That way you guys can see him. Um, let's go ahead and take the overlay down. That way you guys can see him. I'm going to work on getting that, um, uh, the six, or excuse me, the uh, subscribe banner down farther. I'll do that this coming week. There you go. So, bam, DOG in the house, yo. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, there you go. Uh, Shane says, Tom, going back old school, who was your most underrated wrestler in your opinion from either NWA or any look approach you followed? Brad Armstrong. Unequivocally, Brad Armstrong. Underrated. Not by his peers, not by the fans at the time, by the fans today, perhaps, but underrated by the industry as a whole. Yes, Brad Armstrong. So good. Horrible on the mic. Horrible. No fault of his own. It's some guys are not good on the mic, but amazing in the ring. Very, very good, solid, solid, crazy good worker. Crazy good worker. There's my quick answer. I like the acclaim, Timothy. I'm not sold on them yet. I like the presentation. I need to see more of them. Bobby says, when's the man coming back? Um, hopefully soon. I can't wait to see her back. It'll be fun. 
Ray says, I wish they would uh, have old school battle royals like back in the day. They could. They could. Either company could pull it. And uh, AEW's done a lot more than uh, WWE has for sure. Well, kids, guess what? I got to take this sucker home. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching today. As always, we're going to be back next Friday. Later today, I'm going to give you guys the episode 26 reveal of Tom Clark 6 and podcast. I can't do it right now. I will let you guys know it will be today. The episode 26 reveal of Tom Clark 6 and podcast. New episodes drop every Tuesday. Please, please, and thank you. If you've not subscribed yet, please do so. And for everybody watching and listening, Tom Clark's Patreon page is up. No, it doesn't cost a ton of money. No, you won't lose your house if you subscribe to any of my tiers. I promise you they're fun, and I promise you to enjoy them. No pressure. You can do it or not do it. It's completely up to you, but I would appreciate you at least checking it out. Um, it would mean loads to me if I'm being straight with you. And uh, check it out, man. We can have some fun on there. The first tier on the Patreon page is uh, uh, with the uh, subscription fee for the first tier, you get to come on the show. I think it's twice a month. I've got it set up. You're a guest. I'm, talk I'm talking about audio. I'm talking about video. We split screen it. You get to hang out, ask questions, maybe ask questions from the peanut gallery here. Uh, state your comments, uh, thoughts, beliefs, words of wisdom, all in a respectful way, of course. So if you're interested in that, I'd, I've never had any of you guys on the show before, but I'm open to the idea. Um, go check me out on Patreon, dude. Uh, my links are on my social media as we speak. Please go check it out, please, and thank you. Um, so yeah, go and go check that out, man. We also do watch alongs, uh, live TV watch alongs, and also live event watch alongs. That'd be network, new Japan live events. If we can step to three or four in the morning, we, I don't know about that for you guys, but, uh, live AW pay-per-view, that kind of thing. Dude, uh, I'm open. I got three tiers, uh, one for every price range. So there you go. And by the way, the top tier, uh, you get everything I do. There you go. If you guys are interested in that, please go check me out. That's all I'm going to try to hit you up for today. Again, kids, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you, as always, for your full support. Please subscribe to Tom Clark's main event and Tom Clark's Six and Podcast on Apple, uh, uh, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Audible. We're on Audible now as well, Spotify, and the YouTube. I would very much appreciate it. I'm getting out of here, folks. Everybody have a great weekend. All right, and by the way, have a great Valentine's Day as well. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Wear your mask, kids. I'm pointing at you right now. We'll get out of here. Tom Clark's main event.